Even in the privileged countries, there's a lot to do because inequalities exist. Personal relations do help a lot. Switzerland is the country of compromise. UACC is the oldest cancer organization in the world. Good morning and welcome everyone to Onco Daily. I'm Shoshan Hovsepian, a pediatric oncologist, and I will be your host today. We are honored to have a very special guest with us, someone who truly needs no introduction in the world of oncology. Dr. Mati Apro is a name that resonates with excellence and uh, leadership across the globe. So welcome and thank you, Dr. Apro, for accepting our invitation. Well, thank you very much, uh, Shushan. Thank you to Uncle Daly. Uh, it's a pleasure to be with you. Thanks a lot, and pleasure is all ours. And without further ado, let's start by exploring your journey. With such an extensive career in oncology, spanning various leadership roles, what initially drew you to this field, and how did your early experiences shape your journey? Well, as often happens, uh, it is related to meeting someone. Uh, Professor Pierre Alberto, who was my mentor uh, in the first years and uh, even later on, uh, was a very inspiring person. Uh, I loved the way he uh, talked to patients. Uh, uh, he, uh, he taught us all uh, about uh, the developments in oncology. And uh, I felt that uh, that was the area within medicine that I want to go into. And that's, that, that's what happened. Oh, that's wonderful. Mentors are the most important thing, I guess, uh, in our uh, journey. So your global perspective is unique, having lived in multiple countries and speaking seven languages, which is really fascinating. How has this multicultural background influenced your approach to patient care and your vision for global cancer control? Well, let's divide this into two parts. Uh, first, uh, patient care. Uh, it's a privilege, uh, thanks to my parents, that I've been exposed to various uh, cultures. And um, you realize that uh, the people behave in a different way. They uh, talk or don't talk about topics in the same way. And uh, you start to understand that uh, why they do it. And you accept it. And you don't want them to impose your perspective. You want to understand the patient's perspective and uh, see how you can adapt that then to the reality of uh, what you want to discuss with them. Uh, the global approach uh, is also related to the fact that I've been able uh, to travel a lot, meet colleagues in many different countries, spend some time discussing with them about the issues that they face. They are completely different uh, uh, in some ways throughout the world, but they're also the same. Uh, and uh, I believe that we all struggle throughout the world for the best of our patients. And then we have to deal with the realities of the country, uh, which sometimes are much more complicated in some countries and less complicated in others. But still, even in the privileged countries, there's a lot to do because inequalities exist, even in the most rich countries of the world. Yeah, that is sad, actually. But uh, thank you for sharing that. And uh, looking back at your time as a president of the European Cancer Organization, what have been the most significant lessons you have learned about leading large international organizations? It was uh, a very, very interesting time when uh, uh, I became president of what was at the time ECHO ECCO and then became ECHO ECO. These were difficult times. Uh, there had been problems with some uh, of the members that uh, had walked away. And uh, the, the whole uh, system was not going too well. But then suddenly something happened. I was lucky that when uh, uh, the new commission was elected, the uh, president of commission, Ursula von der Leyen, is a doctor. And she asked... Uh, Stella Kyriakides to be the commissioner for health and food. And it happens that uh, because of my work with the European School of Oncology, I, I knew Stella for a very long time. So once again, personal relations do help a lot. And uh, then I was able to convince many societies to join ECHO. I think the most difficult thing uh, was, and this is one that I learned, 
is that you, once again, it's like with patients, you have to understand the backgrounds. Why do people behave in different way? What are their interests? And then you have to look at the interests of everyone else and uh, find a, uh, a middle way. And that's where what I learned in Switzerland, uh, where I've been uh, uh, for the last uh, 60 years, and before that I was in Brazil, uh, Bra Switzerland is the country of compromise. So I think that helped a lot. Well, that's very interesting. And uh, expanding on that, as someone who has been deeply involved also in the organizations like MASK, SIOG, and ESO, how do you balance the needs of these diverse groups while maintaining a unified vision for global cancer care? You touched uh, briefly on uh, some uh, on putting on interests of every person as an important uh, thing, but uh, how you uh, find that balance? Well, finding the balance uh, is not easy. Uh, all of these uh, large uh, societies have a board. Uh, discussions are taken in the board, uh, and uh, the board tries to see uh, what are the priorities. Uh, sometimes there can be mistakes, and we can uh, fail and uh, not understand that something that uh, one uh, society or another is driving should be a priority. Uh, it's always the board's and the president's fault, of course. But uh, uh, on the whole, uh, taking the time, discussing with colleagues, uh, looking at the pros and cons, we arrive to uh, probably the best possible solutions. Uh, working together is important. Uh, it's not a one-man show by no means. It's really working together. Yeah, that's true. And um, as a leader who has seen the evolution of oncology care, what do you believe will be the next significant shift in how we approach cancer treatment and patient care? There are two points that I would like to make. One is prevention, prevention, prevention. Uh, it's cheap. It's very cheap, but it's not driven in the right way. We haven't put all the needed input in there uh, it's amazing uh, the amount of money that uh, some companies spend on promoting not very healthy approaches. And it's amazing uh, that it is so difficult to convince uh, those that should give the money, for example, to UICC to promote a healthy way to approach, not only because of cancer, but because of all other diseases that are related to our unhealthy behavior. Uh, that's uh, that's really a key. And the second point is we have done lots of progress, but we have to realize that many countries still do not have the profit of this progress. Even in, if I may say, and my friends in surgery shouldn't be uh, unhappy with me, even simple things, which are not simple, like surgery, uh, if you look at the burden on surgeons throughout the world with cancer patients, there are not enough specialized cancer surgeons. Not speaking of the fact that radiation oncology machines are not available in many, many countries. They are just not there. And these are two key pillars. It's wonderful. I'm a medical oncologist. Of course, I drive for improvements in drugs, but even access to existing drugs is difficult in many countries. So there's a lot to do. And that's something that also within UICC are promoting thanks to the Atom uh, organization. Yeah, and uh, on that note, um, your involvement in UICC, what motivated you to become a board member of UICC and how does this role align with your broader goals for global oncology? UICC is the oldest cancer organization in the world. And I've had the privilege to uh, be working uh, with UICC either directly uh, at one point when uh, I organized, helped to organize uh, congresses in Geneva and then in Shenzhen in China. And before that, uh, being invited to UICC congresses. Uh, uh, and uh, what I realized is that uh, there's a lot to be done worldwide. UICC is a worldwide entity. It's a way to uh, promote uh, the needs of the patients uh, throughout the world in a very nice way. 
uh, alongside with the World uh, or Health Organization and other entities uh, uh, that exist. And of course, all the European organizations that are happy to have worked with and those international ones that I'm working with. Mm, thank you for sharing that. And in your narrative, you emphasize the urgency for faster progress in cancer treatment and care. How do you plan to bring this sense of urgency and your experience in driving change to your uh, role as a UICC board member? We have been discussing uh, with the uh, present UICC board uh, that one of the priorities uh, of uh, the next years is to increase the uh, contacts with the national organizations. Uh, with, uh, one of the organizations that I'm working with, which is called AllCan, has a specific national organization in different areas of the world. And the best way probably to drive things is really to be on site, to drive things on site. I also learned that with the European Cancer Organization, uh, we uh, thought that what we were saying in Brussels was uh, certainly very good, but we didn't realize that the impact locally would be driven only if we had the contacts locally. And that's what uh, ECHO has decided to do. And that's what UICC is going to be improving upon uh, so that uh, the message that what exists already should be made available is made clear to the governments. It's sometimes difficult because uh, some want to have the glamour of we have this or we have that, and they forget that some basic needs of the patients are forgotten, and they are just as important as given some exceptional drug to some rare patient, whereas you forget the majority of the patients is with some of the needs. Yeah, that's very interesting. And finally, reflecting on your extensive contributions to the field, what legacy do you hope to leave behind, particularly through your work with UICC and, uh, of course, other international cancer organizations? The Swiss believe that uh, this motto is theirs. Uh, Alexandre Dumas used it in the Three Musketeers. One for all, all for one. That's what I would like to leave as a, as a message is that, as I said earlier, it's together, together that we can do something to change the environment, change the behavior and improve the results and help the patients. Excellent. Thank you, Dr. Apro, so much for sharing your invaluable insights with us. And it's been an honor to hear about your journey, your global perspective on cancer care and the tremendous impact that you had and continue having through your leadership in so many international organizations. Thank you so much and take care. Thank you very much. And I hope to see you soon at the UICC or ESMO meetings. Sure. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to Onka Daily on YouTube. Hit the bell icon to stay updated.